Um, well, I, I've been writing since I was a child, really, since I was about nine years old. Um, but I had a very on again, off again relationship with writing, which is to say that I, I would, I always make a joke. I describe it. Uh, my relationship with writing is like a bad, a really bad lover, you know. So for a while, we would be together. We would come together, and I would say, "Oh, we're we're in love. I'm going to be with you forever and ever." And then six months later everything had turned bad again and then we wouldn't speak for a year. So I had a relationship like that with writing for most of my adult life. Some time passed and I, I began writing these um, sort of vignettes, very short, very um, lyric driven prose vignettes. They were autobiographical. Um, and at some point I tried to sort of squish them into a book, but it wouldn't work. They, they didn't function that way. Um, and then this book kind of came into being. I was, uh, I was in graduate school um, in a graduate writing program at the um, Iowa Writers Workshop. And, um, and I, as I said, these, these short autobiographical vignettes that I had tried to squish into a book were not working. And um, I was studying with Marilyn Robinson uh, at the time. And she confirmed my suspicion that they were not working. <laughs> and so I abandoned it altogether and I was really stuck. And I thought, well, I'll just write some short stories and I'll see what happens. And so I began writing this book as um, short stories, really. It wasn't until probably the third or fourth one that I realized that it was actually a novel. Before that, I thought that they were just stories. And I didn't even understand that they really had anything to do with each other. Um, and so that's sort of how, that's sort of how the whole thing began. very interested in creating um, a heroine and a heroine who was very strong but who didn't have the usual um, stereotypes of strength which is a person who doesn't make mistakes a person who doesn't get angry a person who isn't afraid um, a person who doesn't have a sexual identity you know this sort of monolith of strength that is um, false I think and kind of dehumanizing I mean because no one is like that that's not a, there are no human beings like that um, so I wanted her to be strong, but I also wanted her to be a full human being. And she is, I think, very much a full human being. D difficult, but, um, but very full. My own grandmother m migrated from, um, from the South to the North. She was from Georgia. She had a lot of children, not so many children as Hattie does. Um, and she, she was a very um, sort of stoic woman, a very quiet woman, very silent. And I think that in some ways, Hattie is certainly not my own grandmother. Uh, they have very little in common in, in terms of character. But I think um, in some ways, Hattie was a way of imagining who my grandmother was it beneath all of that silence, you know, because I didn't know her. I mean, I knew her, obviously. I'd spent time with her, but I didn't know her. She was very unknowable. I think nobody knew her, really. Um, and so she, so Hattie is an imagined, you know, sort of if I had, if anybody had been able to kind of talk to my grandmother and find out what made her who she was, I think Hattie is some attempt to imagine my way into my grandmother. Let's see, I'll just do my favorites, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, enormously important, Toni Morrison. People sort of talk about that all the time when they talk about the book, um, which I don't think sounds like her at all. But, uh, but she's very important to me, um, particularly Beloved, particularly Sula, particularly Song of Solomon, um, those books very much. Um, also Faulkner, William Faulkner, enormously, a um, huge, huge reader of Faulkner, very, very important to me, um, uh, particularly The Sound and the Fury um, and Absalom, Absalom, um, probably more than, than others. Um, other influences, James Baldwin, certainly, um, Go tell it on the mountain, probably in in a very specific way. And then um, I read a there. Are, I could go on and on, but I'll stop with those three. Uh, and I also read a great deal of poetry. As I said, I I started out writing poetry, so I still read um, a great deal of poetry. So you know, Philip Levine, very important to me, a, a poet named Rita Dove, who I think probably is not very well known here. Um, Anne Carson, um, who else? Yusef Kumanyaka. Um, but anyway, yeah, those are, those are, I think, are really the biggest influences. Mm -hmm.